O God, help us to listen to your word with understanding, to receive it with faith, and to obey it with courage for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Please be seated. The title of this message is Every Child Matters. Across Canada today and throughout this past week, many churches have gathered either in person or virtually to remember the 215 children buried at a former Roman Catholic residential school in Kamloops, BC, and to pray for the families and communities who grieve. Our primate, the most reverend Linda Nichols, writes in a letter entitled, Every Child Matters. The grief of families and communities unleashed by this news is heart-wrenching and profound. There have long been stories told in indigenous communities of children who disappeared or never returned home from residential school and whose parents were never told what had happened or given the opportunity to receive their bodies for community ceremony. Whether the deaths were due to illnesses, abuse, or neglect, the lack of dignity offered to these children by an anonymous burial far from their family or community is tragic and unacceptable. We grieve with all whose children never came home. The Anglican Church of Canada shares in the painful legacy of residential schools. We remain committed to the long, hard road of reconciliation, including apologies made in 1993 for our part in residential schools and in 2019 for the devastating spiritual harm caused and ongoing work towards reconciliation and support for healing for personal and intergenerational trauma. We know there are sites at Anglican residential schools where some graves are unmarked or where records are incomplete. We are committed to working with indigenous communities to assist to recover whatever information is available and to join in advocating for ground searches of those burial sites. At the heart of our faith is the life of Jesus who said, let the little children come to me, do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid hands on them, and blessed them. The neglect of the dignity of children, whom Jesus welcomed and protected, calls for repentance in action. We, as Anglicans, commit to working with indigenous communities, leaders, and elders to heal this legacy and honor the lives of the children who never went home. Signed by the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, Archbishop and Primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. Today, we grieve with those who grieve. Every tragic story we hear is one too many. And this recent discovery in Kamloops is not one story, but 215 stories, because every child matters. I think it is important to acknowledge that whether Roman Catholic, Anglican, or other denomination, not every administrator or teacher in the residential schools or in the day schools was abusive. There are positive stories from the residential schools as well as the day schools. I have personally known, and you also may know, teachers or administrators from the residential school system or the day school system who loved and nurtured every child under their care. 
In fact, I was with one former, former residential school teacher who, years after retiring, was visited by two of her former students, and they obviously loved and respected each other. It is not fair to call all residential schools or day schools places of abuse and evil. Yet, positive examples such as this do not in any way diminish the pain of the Kamloops tragedy. Even under difficult and tragic circumstances, God has a way of speaking truth to us. The readings we heard today remind us of God's love for us, his children. We are all members of the body of Christ, his church. And while, as the scripture says, outwardly we are wasting away, from God's perspective, earthly things are temporary. Despite the trials and tragedies of this life, God has an eternal plan of salvation for every one of us. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Sometimes it is difficult to remember who we are and whose we are. Because we are always under attack, whether inside or outside the church. Because the devil can show up anywhere. In the same way that Jesus was constantly under attack. The scribes, the church leaders, accused Jesus of being possessed by Beelzebul or Satan or the devil. And they said, by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. But Jesus responded, if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. Whose side are we on? Well, you and I, as members of the body of Christ, are on the same side, aren't we? Despite the wrongs that have been done by people claiming to be godly, but were far from God, we who are called to be his church, his people, remain on the Lord's side. Do you remember the story of Moses going up on the mountain to receive the tablets containing the Ten Commandments? While he was gone, the people asked Aaron to make them a golden calf to worship. And when Moses came back down and saw the people worshiping the golden calf, he got so angry, what did he do? He threw down those tablets and they shattered, they broke into pieces just as the people had broken the commandments by their actions. Moses took the calf that they had made and he burned it with fire, ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. And Moses asked the people, who was on the Lord's side? Come to me. And then there is a story of Joshua, who was about to bring the Israelites into the promised land. And he stood and said to them, Choose this day whom you shall serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Despite the wrongs of the past, committed by ungodly people claiming to be Christians, we are called to be faithful following the example of those who have been faithful in their generation. As members of the body of Christ, we are on the Lord's side. We live each day serving him, loving our neighbor, speaking against actions that are outside the will of God. And we stand alongside those who are hurting and pray that we may be instruments of truth and healing and reconciliation as the church is called to be. My friends, we cannot change the past. 
but we can make a difference here and now in the present in the hope that today's children will pass a legacy of faith and love and hope to their children, God's children. Remembering that we are on the Lord's side, let us proclaim the truth of God's word. We are called to love one another as Jesus has loved us, to repent of wrongdoing, and to proclaim the gospel of salvation, the message of the cross, and the hope of the resurrection. And may we demonstrate every day, not only by our words, but by our actions, that every child matters, because every child is a child of God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, whose children suffered at the hands of Herod, receive, we pray, all innocent victims into the arms of your mercy. By your great might, frustrate all evil designs and establish your reign of justice, love, and peace. Make us instruments of your truth, of your healing, and your love and reconciliation following the good examples of the faithful in every generation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.